Hey, what's going on, GHL Mastery and YouTube? Welcome to a late night edition of How To with Go High Level. Um, we had a really unique question that got dropped actually in the Go High Level group um, by Nick Jacobs, and he was asking how to do a very specific thing that High Level doesn't do natively. And that was he wanted to basically collect all of the contact records for appointments that are happening the following day and create an email that would actually go out to his clients every day and say, these are the appointments that you have set up for today. Don't forget about them. So this is a quick example of what that email would look like. So here's Steve Jobs, his appointments at 8 a.m. and the location is on Zoom. There's Adam McInnes and there's Joe Blow. So it's just an email that breaks down all of the appointments that are coming up for the next day that gets sent out first thing in the morning. So I got on a call with Nick just to clarify, hey, what are you actually trying to do? And then I put this together and I wanted to show you guys exactly how you can do it. Um, now, if you are watching this live, there are two of you. I want you to comment live. Let me know that you're here. And if you're watching this on the replay, let me know that you're watching this on the replay. And of course, if you guys get any value out of what we're putting together in these videos, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe and help the channel grow and help more high levelers level up with high level. So let's get into it. All right. So let's go and show you, first of all, exactly what this thing does. So I'm going to go in here into the calendar. You can see I've already been testing. I'm going to go and I'm going to book a few calls with a few different people. So, and I'm going to book them at random times. Um, so we're going to book at, let's say 3.30 for this one. And we're going to put Adam McInnes in there. This is a new feature, by the way, the consent um, because A2P is all happening and we've got to get all on board with it. So there's the first one. Let's do the second one at 10 a.m. on the 30th. This time we're going to do Steve Jobs again. And we're going to schedule that one. And I don't have a third proper saved contact that is not real. So I'm going to go with good old Joe Blow again. Um, Joe Blow, there we go. And we're going to go Joe at blow.com and we're going to do I always do this five, 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 one, two, three, four. And then I'll just change the phone number because that is Steve Jobs phone number. And we're also going to change this to one, two, five fake street. And we're going to schedule the meeting. So now we've got all three of those appointments scheduled for the 30th. Uh, today is July 27th. So here's how this whole thing works. I have to do a couple of manual pushes here because this is all timed um, so that it works appropriately. So first things first, Put your client in this workflow. So this workflow right here is going to be an internal workflow, which I will show you in just a second. But we're going to go into this workflow and show you how it's all done. So this can be done with any existing calendar structure or function that you have today. So you can just literally carbon copy this, put it in there. All you have to do is change. If you wanted to filter it, just change the calendar that it's in to like so. Otherwise, this will work with any calendar or appointment that is confirmed for that day. So here's where we get tricky. So there's no native feature in high level that can just say, grab this group of people and send an email because I don't know why. That would be a great feature, but they don't have it. So we have to force the system to do it and we do it in a kind of a creative way. So the first thing that we're going to do, and you're going to have to follow along here because this is a little bit tricky. We're created a custom field called appointment details. So we're going to update this field with the contacts appointment information. So if you're asking any pre-qualifying questions or anything like that in here, you need to come and update this field to include all of that information. And we're going to start it with the contact name. And then we're going to go and we're going to insert the appointment start time. So uh, that's really hard to do. Uh, appointment start time like so and then the location of the meeting. And again, if you had any other custom fields that you have on your calendar appointment form, all you would do is you just comma separate it and then add the next line or the next thing that you're adding. In this case, that's all I've got. I've just got name, um, meeting time and location, but you can add any of the custom fields that we have in here. So you're gonna update appointment details with that specific client's appointment information from their booking. Now, we are going to update a custom field again, but this time we're going to use an existing custom value. Uh, and the reason that we do that is that we're going to stack these on top of each other. So every single time somebody books, a custom value is going to get updated with the existing custom value plus, and I separated it by this bracket very for a very specific reason, and I will show you that um, 
in the next section here, but um, we're taking the custom value that already exists, that already has names, emails, you know, information in it. And we're then updating with the appointment details from this custom field right here. So if you're not following me, watch this again, because uh, it's a little bit confusing. We're tricking the system into doing what we want it to do. So there's your tomorrow's appointments. Again, this is updating a custom field. So that is contact specific. Hang out for a second. Now we're going to do updating a custom value. So tomorrow's appointments is the custom value that we're going to update. Currently, it's just a plus symbol. And I'll show you that in the next one as well, why we do it that way. So we're going to take contact tomorrow's appointments. Now, why would we do it that way? Because contact tomorrow's appointments has historical data from the custom value that came before it. And it always also has current data of the newest appointment that just got booked. Now, the other thing that's really, really important here is that we have this wait one day before step right at the top so that within 24 hours, this is going to go out and it's going to, it's going to go out in order. So if the earliest appointment is going to go first and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. So it's all going to be in order in that custom value. And then at the end of this, we're just going to clear that tomorrow's appointments field to empty because you don't want to have a contact record field that has a bunch of other people's contact information and in it. it just doesn't make sense. So we empty it and then off we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the status section here and I'm going to push these in order of time. So we've got 10 a.m. That one's going to go first. Now that would naturally go first on its own. And then we're going to do the 11 a.m. And then we're going to do the 3.30 p.m. Like so. So now all of those have gone through. They have all updated. And now we're going to show you. Oh, I have unsaved changes. Let's go save. Okay, cool. Um, now we're going to go into settings and we're going to go check custom values. So here is what the raw custom value is going to look like. So you've got Steve Jobs appointment at 10 a.m. Location is Zoom. You've got Joe Blow appointment time at 11 a.m. Location Zoom. And you've got Adam McInnes appointment time at 3.30 and the location is Zoom. So again, if you have a dynamic location, like you actually have a dynamic Zoom link or you have an address field or whatever the location is set on your calendar, that's obviously going to show up here and it's going to be a unique value for that. Okay, so now let's go into the workflow that makes all the magic happen. So this is for sending tomorrow's appointments. Now we do a couple of things. We wait until 1 a.m. So every morning at 1 a.m., this is going to fire off. We have a condition here that the custom value, so this is the custom value, is plus. If it is plus, that's bad. That means that they have no appointments for the next day. So we're just going to put them down here, and then they're going to go back up and wait for the next day. Now what we're going to do is the ninja stuff. So we are going to update field. Now this is a contact specific field. The only contact that should ever be in this workflow is going to be your client. So in this case, it's me, um, but it should only be your client. So we're now going to update those fields for that client's fields into the actual custom value. So we've got the custom values tomorrow's appointments, just like so. Now we are going to empty the custom value. So we're going to make, I just chose an arbitrary key. We're going to make it a plus sign. That's going to basically zero it out and reset it for the next day. Now, here's where we do some ninja stuff. Um, if you ever try to send a custom value that is a long message custom value, it is literally going to send the email in the exact format that it came into the custom value. So it's going to look messy. It's going to look dirty. So we used this brand new chat GPT function because why not? It's awesome. Um, you should be using it. We just say, here are the appointments and information for today. And then we input that custom field that we just updated here for the contact. Rewrite this with proper HTML formatting for an email. And then I put any slash in this indicates a new paragraph so that it's going to separate the lines from the custom value. Now, I'm going to just go in real quick to show you this because I want to make sure that this makes sense to you. Inside the custom value, we've got all of these slashes. So anywhere that there is a slash, I've told ChatGPT to consider that a break. So we're going to create a new line. Okay. So let's go back into the workflow. We've got to set it, send it through here. Uh, we're going to just cancel that. Um, and then again, we update tomorrow's appointments custom field for your client's contact record to the chat GPT response. And I'm going to show you something really cool that happens here. Um, and then we're going to wait until 8am and then we're going to send the appointments 
to your client. And it's as simple as putting this in here like that. So let's uh, let's push me through to the next step here. And then I'm going to show you what happens to the custom value so that you understand what is going on. We're going to move all, just me. And then we are going to reformat. Sometimes this step takes a little bit because um, we are asking ChatGPT to do some ninja things. Okay, so we're going to wait until 8 a.m. So let's go back here and check what it did with the custom value now. Oh, it already reset it. Okay, I want to go into the custom field for the contact because that's what I said what I was going to do. Uh, let's go to contacts and let's go find me. Now you'll notice right here, today's appointments, tomorrow's appointments, look at how ChatGPT has formatted this email. So that makes no sense, but when you put it out in an email format, it absolutely does. So let's go and push me to the next step. It is 8 a.m. the next morning. I am now going to get an email and look, I looped back up. So now I'm waiting until 1 a.m. the next day. So I'm just going to stay in this loop and I'm going to get this email every single day. So let's go and look at the newest email. We've got appointments for today. And there we go. We've got Steve Jobs, appointment time, 10 a.m., location Zoom, Joe Blow and Adam McInnes, all in order of operations for the appointments that they are going to be coming in at. So there you go. That's how you build it. You can go and do this for yourself. Um, I eventually will have a link. I'm probably going to sell this for like $29. It's a super simple micro snapshot, two workflows, three custom fields. Um, if you want to purchase it, you can just comment on this somewhere and I will make sure that you get the link to purchase it. I don't have a link yet, but I will. Um, and so yeah, $29, buy it. We'll see you guys on the next one.